Hey guys, Rev Rod here. Um, hey, welcome back to Devo Day 3 of 10. Um, hope you guys are having a great time um, during this Memorial Day weekend. Um, a shout out to all the um, vets and, and just what this weekend represents. A thank you for your service to those men and women um, who sacrificed uh, on our behalf so that we can enjoy um, those freedoms. So thank you. Um, but anyway, you're probably wondering, um, I'm in a different location here. I am. I am in uh, the pastor's, the pastor's uh, workout center. So as you can see, like, don't let all this weight behind you um, or behind me uh, fool you because um, I'm not sure how much weight he can actually lift. Anyway, so if he's watching this, then um, he'll uh, probably kill me. Anyway, so we're going to get going here. Um, we've been going over the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit? Um, what's the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Today, briefly, well, hopefully briefly, I want to talk about um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you haven't um, caught the last two devotionals, go ahead and check those out on the Firehouse website. Um, you could just just watch those at your, at your pleasure, but um, it kind of lays the groundwork of what we're doing here. So, um, and there's a progression, there's a method to my madness. So, with that being said... Um, we're just going to get right into it. So I want to talk briefly about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the baptism that the Holy Spirit performs once you accept Christ. Once you believe on Jesus um, as your Lord, as your Savior, once you believe in Him, um, the Holy Spirit does a work in your life. So He baptizes us into the body of Christ. Um, it's found in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. I'm not going to flip there. I'm just going to rattle these off. Um, because I know if you're like me, we have a, a busy day ahead of us, especially this weekend. So I'm going to try to make this um, short and sweet. So 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, um, We were all baptized by one spirit into one body. Or something along those lines. Okay, so we were baptized by one spirit. This, he's talking about the baptism into the body of of Christ as believers we join our brothers and sisters in Christ in one body the church and by one spirit and that's the Holy Spirit coming into our lives to help renew us and regenerate us if you remember from yesterday's Devo we looked at John 20 um, 22 specifically is when Jesus breathed on the disciples um, and said receive the Holy Spirit so this was a regeneration, a renewal. They've been walking with him, but then that's after Jesus um, went, to, went to the cross, went to the tomb, rose again. This is that in John 20. So this is after the resurrection, and he breathes on the disciples, um, receive the Holy Spirit. That was the regeneration. What happens during regeneration? The Holy Spirit comes in, and he does a complete work. In my life, in your life, um, and it's for the better. Um, in John 3.3, 3, we talked also yesterday about um, how when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, Nicodemus comes and asks him, um, hey, w what's going on here? Like, like give me some, some advice here. And Jesus is like, look, I'm telling you, if you're not born again, if you're not born again, um, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So... He's just, he's just talking to him and saying that Nicodemus is like, do I have to go inside my mother's womb again? No, that is weird and unusual, and you can't do that. Um, Jesus says, no, I'm telling you, if you're not born of water and of spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So um, what he's saying is, if you're not born again, that's the question to you today. Are you born again? Are you born again? Have you put your faith and hope and trust in God? And what I mean by that, have you, are, have you committed your life? Have you received his forgiveness for your life? Have you? Have others around you um, received Jesus Christ's forgiveness for us? Because all of us are sinners, the Bible says. All of us fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. But Jesus and what he did at Calvary, on the cross, what he did for us, um, offers that sacrifice for our sin. He became sin who knew no sin so are you there have you been born again i want you to inherit the kingdom of heaven 
Sometimes we get hung up, though, because we don't abide by the standard. You see, when Jesus breathed into the disciples, a lot of us sometimes, we have that choice. Jesus is right here. He, he's offering. He stands at the door and knocks. I mean, we have to make that effort to go. But we don't like that breath. Sometimes we think Jesus has some stanky breath. We think he, he just does not smell good. Why? Because the standard that's laid out in this book, we don't oftentimes agree with it. Why? Because our fleshly nature of this world, our sinful nature, goes against what God says always. Goes against what God says always. So we don't like it. In our standard of living, we have a hard time following a standard. We do. Until the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, convinces us of our sin, our righteousness, and our judgment, comes in and radically just changes our perspective. And that's what happens. So are we there yet? The standard that Jesus sets forth is so good. He doesn't need a breath mint. He doesn't need an Altoid. What he breathes on his disciples is this breath right here written in this book. And it's living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And this will cut you straight to the heart. And this will help guide and direct you through all life's problems. Everything that you can encounter is in this book. Okay, and that's what the Holy Spirit brings for us. So it, it also talks about in Romans 12 too, um, how we should not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by a renewing of our mind. So Jesus, because he left in John 16, 7, he says, because I leave, it's to your advantage that I go, because I'm going to send the helper. We all need a little help. And that Holy Spirit in regeneration and, and the washing um, by the water and the and the renewing, the making us white as snow, our sins are gone, the new has come. Um, that is what Jesus wants to do. Be he wants to transform our mind. He wants to take that focus that and shift it to Christ-centered, not self-centered. He wants to shift it to God-centeredness, not um, worldly-centeredness. He wants to shift it towards living a life in the spirit, not a life in the flesh. So he transforms us. But sometimes we don't like um, to be transformed. Sometimes we like to just be comfortable. Sometimes we just like to, um, I don't know, sometimes we get callous. The Bible talks about how our hearts get hardened and we get callous towards the things of God. Um, and sometimes that puts us in a, in a really bad situation. Um, for instance, I had a planner's wart one time, and it actually, the planner's wart needs to come out of the body, but the body sees the wart, and it was like, oh, wait, we have to protect ourselves. So what happens is the body starts building a callus around the wart, which actually makes it a lot harder for that wart to come out, to actually, you know, so it keeps digging in the little seed or whatever is inside the ward it just keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper into the foot and I had to get shots in the foot and if you ever had that it's terrible um, but anyway that's what I'm talking about that's the same thing with with when we harden our hearts we get a callus over our heart our body maybe we're not even thinking of it but it's our flesh saying I don't want this word it's not good for you let's put a callus over it um, and protect you. No way. You gotta get that wart out of your life. You gotta get that sin out of your life. Because I'm gonna tell you, if you are not a slave to God, you're a slave to sin. If you're not a slave to God, you're a slave to sin. But what happens when we get regenerated? When we get regenerated, we are washed by the blood. We are renewed. We are um, set apart. We are delivered out of the land of Egypt. And we go through into the promised land. We are delivered from the sin. And we are delivered now. And we are made new. In 2 Corinthians 5.17 it says, The old is gone, the new has come. The old man is gone, the new has come. So rejoice in that. Um, this is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we long for. And... Jesus is our example. And I'll end with this. Jesus is our example, right? 
Jesus, let me ask you a question. Did Jesus need to be baptized? Did he need to be born again, I should ask you? I'll wait. No, he didn't need to be born again. Why? Because he was born right the first time. He was born right the first time. Well, how was he born right the first time? The Holy Spirit made a deposit into Mary, and it was the seed of God. The Holy Spirit did that. Okay, and then Jesus walked, okay, walked on this earth as 100% man, 100% God. Don't forget that, okay? And then um, he became sin who knew no sin. He was the spotless lamb, the perfect sacrifice for you and I to, to have everlasting life with him, okay? Um, which is just an, an awesome thing, but I want you to remember, Jesus is our example. Jesus is was born right the first time. We were not. We were not. We have a sinful nature. So this rebirth is nothing crazy. It's not like anything weird. What, what the Bible is saying is that when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, and, you, and you're convinced of your sin and your slavery to sin, and you want to walk in righteousness with the Holy Spirit and with God, and you believe everything that's laid out in this book, and maybe some things you don't even know yet or discover, but you just know enough that, yes, that's it right there. When you, when you believe that, Jesus deposits or God deposits that seed into us. So it's like a rebirth for us. It's a renewal of our mind, our whole body. Our spirit was once dead and now it's alive in Christ. We are dead to our sin and we are made alive in Christ. And the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and I. Boom. Awesome. So I hope you're encouraged on this Memorial Day. That's baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, throughout the week, uh, these next 10 days, I don't know what day, uh, but we're going to be going over a little bit of water baptism and baptism in the Holy Spirit um, because there is some differences there. So um, I hope you're encouraged. Um, stay blessed and let me pray for you. Father in heaven, thank you for today. Lord, I ask if anyone out there is watching, Lord, and they haven't committed their life to you, Lord, I ask that today is the day because they hear your voice and they're convinced, Lord. So I pray that right now, Lord, wherever they're at, that they would receive you as, your, as their Lord and Savior. And Father God, that you would come in and your Holy Spirit would reign and rule in their life forever and forever. Father, and that you would never leave them nor forsake them. Father, I thank you for everyone that's listening. Lord, I ask that you would bless them, keep them, and may your face shine upon them. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, check it out tomorrow. Um, we'll, have, we'll continue on day four of um, our Devo, uh, so uh, leading up to Pentecost, all right? Love you guys. See ya.